Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dr. Vivek Palipuram bringing you the next lecturette in ENGR 250 Probability and Statistics for Engineering and Computer Science. In this lecturette, I'm going to discuss set theory and we are going to use set theory to find probabilities of different events ultimately. So let's look into what set theory is all about. So the definition of a set is as follows. A set is just a collection of things. For example, a collection of all natural numbers is a set. Now this set N comprises of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on up to infinity. Even numbers less than or equal to 6 is also a set. Specifically, this set consists of 3 items and those items are 2, 4 and 6 because these 3 items 2, 4 and 6 are less than or equal to 6. In mathematics, it is customary to denote a set using a capital letter, for example, capital N in this case, and capital E in this case. And the elements in this set are denoted by usually X, where X is a lowercase character. So for example, if X is equal to four, then we say that X belongs to the set E. In mathematics, we use the epsilon notation to denote whether or not a particular item belongs to a set or not. For example, if x is equal to 4, then if you want to say that x is equal to e, or rather x belongs to e, in this case, we denote it as x belongs to e, or x epsilon e. Similarly, for example, myself, Dr. VKP, I belong to the set of School of Engineering and Computer Science because I'm a valid member. Whereas it will be incorrect to say that Dr. VKP belongs to UFC MMA and therefore to denote whether or not an element does not belong to a set, we use epsilon with a strike. So epsilon with a strike means does not belong to. So I definitely do not belong to UFC MMA because that will be really bad for my health. Moving forward, there are several operations that you can perform using sets. And in fact, using some of these operations, you can create more sets. For example, consider two sets A and B. A union of these two sets A and B gives you another set called A union B or A U B in this case, which is another set such that any element in this new set is going to belong either in A or in B or in both. So if X belongs to set A union B, then X belongs to A or X belongs to B, or in fact, X may even belong to both A and B. This operation is called as the set union operation and it corresponds to logical R operator. The next operation that you can perform on the set is the intersection. Intersection of two sets A and B gives you another set a intersection B or A inverted U B says that any element in this new set is going to belong to both A and in B. So if any element X, if it belongs to this new intersection, A intersection B, then X belongs to A and X belongs to B. Essentially, X belongs to A intersection B if and only if X belongs to A and X belongs to B. Essentially, it should contain, it should be contained in both A and B. Now, this set operation, set intersection, corresponds to the logical AND operation. The next important operation that you can perform with the set is that of a complement. Complement of a set A gives you another set and we denote it using A with uh, on the superscript a C mark which implies complement. So A, A with a subscript or rather superscript C is complement of A such that any element X which belongs to A, this new set will not belong to set A. So if X belongs to A complement then that means that X does not belong to A. So we are considering all the elements that are outside of A. That's what set complement means. Then the next operation is set difference. The difference between two sets A and B gives you another set, which is A minus B, such that any element in this set is contained in A, but not in B. So A minus B literally translates to a minus B literally translates to in A, but not in B. Essentially, it's an intersection between A and everything that is outside 
of B, meaning A intersection B complement. That's what A minus B is all about. An element is in A, but not in B. That's set difference. Now, those are some of the operations that you can perform with sets to create new sets. Now, let's look into some properties of a collective or rather a collection of sets. One of the important properties that you will come across is the mutually exclusive sets. Sets A1, A2, A3, and so on until A of n, they are called mutually exclusive if intersection between any two sets gives you null, which is denoted by phi, meaning that intersection between any two sets does not result in any set. In fact, it gives you nada, it gives you zero. For example, A and B right here, they do not have an intersection between them. There is no area between A and B that is common to both. So we can say here that A intersection B is equal to null set and therefore both A and B are mutually exclusive. So when you generalize this to n sets, let, let's say A1, A2 and so on until A of n, then all of these sets are mutually exclusive if and only if, if you were to take any two sets out of this set, out of this collection, if their intersection gives you zero, if it gives you null, meaning that they do not have any region that is common to both, then that means they are all mutually exclusive. The next property that you will come across with respect to sets are the collective is the collective exhaustive set property. Now let's say that you have sets A1, A2, and so on until A of n. If you were to take a union of all these sets, and if it gives you a superset S, then it is called, uh, then all of these sets A1, A2, and A3, and so on until A of n are called collectively exhaustive sets. So by considering their union, you get a set which comprises of all possible values. For example, let's say that I have a superset which is natural numbers, let's say 1, 2, 3, and so on until infinity. I have another set E, which comprises of elements that are greater than zero and that are even. And those elements will be two, four, six, and so on until infinity. Similarly, I can define a set O, which gives me, um, or which comprises of elements that are odd, but greater than zero. And those elements will be one, three, five, and so on and so forth until infinity. So if I were to take a union between set E and set O, it will give me my super set S, which is collection of all natural numbers. So therefore, in this case, I can say that E and O, they're collectively exhaustive because by considering their union, I get the super set. Two sets A and B are sets to be equal to each other if A is entirely contained in B. This U, this toppled U sign that you see here, that means A, that means a set on the left side is entirely contained on the set on the right side. For example, in this case, A, a toppled U B means that A is entirely contained in B. For equality between two sets, both sets should be contained in each other, meaning that A should be contained in B and similarly B should be contained in A. So if you have to prove an equality between two sets, you have to use logical deduction to prove that both the sets are contained in one another. Next important property is set cardinality. Set cardinality essentially means the size of the set. For example, I have set E, let's say, and it comprises of these elements 2, 4, and 6, then cardinality of this set is denoted by uh, this let this capital, the name of the set E enclosed in two vertical bars that denotes cardinality and that is equal to 3 because there are three elements. So cardinality of a set is the size of that set. That's the definition of cardinality. Okay, now here's what I would like for you guys to do. What I would like for you guys to do is pause this video right here and try to prove the De Morgan's laws. The De Morgan's law is A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement. Now remember, A union B complement is essentially a set and A complement intersection B complement is 
another set. So what you need to do in order to prove their equality is that A union B complement is entirely contained in A complement intersection B complement. And similarly, you need to prove that A complement intersection B complement is entirely contained in A union B complement. You can pause your video here, try to work on this problem. Once you're ready, you can unpause this video and I can show you how you can solve this or how like, you can prove this logically. Okay, I hope you had the chance to prove the De Morgan's law. So let's look into how we can prove the De Morgan's law. Here we need to prove the equality between two sets. And in order to prove the equality between two sets, we need to make we need to show that each of these sets is contained in the other set. So let's say that I consider an element X which belongs to the set A union B complement. If X belongs to A union B complement, then I can definitely say that X does not belong to A union B, which implies that X does not belong to A and X does not belong to B. And collectively, I can say that X belongs to A complement because X does not belong to A and X belongs to B complement. And when I use this AND and replace it with an intersection, I get X belongs to A complement intersection B complement. So any element X that belongs to A union B complement is now proved to be, or is proved, uh, or is found to, or rather, okay. Any element X belongs to A union B complement is now found to be contained in this set A complement intersection B complement. And therefore, we have proved here that A union B complement is actually contained in A complement intersection B complement. You can work similarly to prove that A complement intersection B complement is contained in A union B complement. For example, if X belongs to A complement intersection B complement, then I can say that X belongs to A complement and X belongs to B complement which implies that X does not belong to A and X does not belong to B. So even if I were to take a union between A and B, X will not belong to this set, which implies that X belongs to A union B complement. So here I have proved that any element X in this set, A complement into section B complement is found to be present in this set A union B complement and therefore I have proved that A complement intersection B complement is a subset of A union B complement or if or A complement intersection B complement is entirely contained in A union B complement and that's how we prove the De Morgan's law. We are going to use all these theorems to solve probability problems I do not expect you to prove these theorems in your exams because this is not a hardcore mathematics course in taken in mathematical sciences department, but this is an engineering course. We will use these theorems to find probabilities of different events, although it will be great for us to make sure that we understand how these different theorems are proved. Okay, now let's put set theory in action. Here's what I would like for you guys to do. Read this problem statement carefully and I'll solve parts one, two, and three. Parts four, five, and six are for you to solve. And if you would like to verify your solution with me, you can join me in my Webex office hours scheduled next week, Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, so let's solve this problem. So a pizza at Gerlandos is either regular R or Tuscan. So this statement is actually telling you that Gerlandos produces two types of pizzas, regular or Tuscan. So if you were to consider their union, you'll get the entire set, meaning you'll get all kinds of pizzas made by Gerlandos. And this statement, regular or Tuscan itself, it's telling you that these two sets are mutually exclusive of one another, meaning that there's no intersection between R and T. In addition, each slice may have a mushroom or M or onions O as described by the Venn diagram here. Venn diagram is a nice tool that figuratively depicts how the sets are related to one another. For example, in this case, you can see that both mushrooms and onion pizza have some regions that are common to one another. That intersection means that those are 
that particular region is that area which denotes pizzas containing both mushrooms and onions. So let's solve the part one. We, I need to find the region R. Now the very first statement in this problem tells me that Gerlanda's pizza can be either regular or Tuscan. It can be either regular or Tuscan, which means that R and T are mutually exclusive, meaning that there is no region common to both. And in addition, this statement also tells you that R and T are both collectively exhaustive, meaning that if you were to take their union, you will get this entire bounding box, the superset. So if this box, if this small box is T, then all of the region that is outside of this box T is actually your region R. So that's the shaded region R. Let's look into M union O. Let's find out what we get when you take a union between M and O. So this is M, this is O. If you were to take a union, if you were to take a union between them, you will get a region which looks something like this. So that is M union O. Now let's look into M intersection O, the region that is common to both M and O. Let me use another pen here. Let me use green for M intersection O. So the region that is common to both M and O is this shaded region right here. So that's the region that is common to both M and O and therefore that region is M intersection O. Now I would like for you guys to shade the regions R union M. Please don't read it as rum, it's R union M. R intersection M and T complement minus M. If you would like to verify your solution, please join me during my WebEx office hours. All right, so I will stop this lecture right here where I have introduced you to set theory and some common set operations. In my next video lecturette, I'm going to discuss probability theorems and axioms and some common terms will be defined that are commonly used in probability theory. So please stay tuned for the next video.